Now, the story of Moses is actually an African story. And once you once I explain it, you'll start to realize that that's the reason why they said that, oh, Africans have no history, don't worry about it. You know, their history is just slavery. They just try to say that Africans have no history, but yet they have our art and our and our sculptures all throughout their museums, but yet somehow, you know, our, our culture was primitive back in the day. You see how ridiculous it is? And they're controlling the narrative of history. So they could say whatever they want. So it's an African history, it's an African story, and this guy was actually Abu Bakari II. Because there's a story in the Mali Empire, which is an amazing empire that they refuse to talk about, because they said that black people have no history, but they, they forgot to mention that, you know, ah, the Mali Empire was an amazing empire. It was very rich, very powerful, and these were very, very smart people, okay? Abu Bakari II is the one that uh, created an exodus because he was the one that wanted to know what was beyond the Atlantic, you know, the sea. And he sent an expedition. Now, the whole parting of the sea is ridiculous. The whole Moses parting the sea and, and the exodus and freeing his people and stuff like that, uh, the sea parts, and they go on dry land. It's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous story. That's not what happened. Like with Abu Bakari II, what he did was he there was an exodus from the Mali Empire and there was a part of the sea that takes you straight to the Americas. That's what they're referring to. And that's what happened. They he to the, over 2000 ships he created and they went to the other side. They took that part of the sea and they went to the other side. That's the story of Moses. It's an African story from the Mali Empire. And these people from the Mali Empire, they are the Israelites. But yet they don't want you to know that because it will completely throw their whole narrative out the window. You understand? But eventually people will find that out. Moses is actually an African named Abu Bakari II from the Mali Empire. With trade booming, they financed an exploratory expedition into the Atlantic, which returned with reports of a great river flowing through the ocean. Seeing an opportunity for wealth and adventure, the king, Mansa Abu Bakari Kieta II, raised a fleet of 2,000 ships and prepared to find and settle whatever new land this current might sweep him to. He left his regent in charge of the empire and dropped his sails. The fleet of 200 ships departed in the year 1310 AD. When the ships departed, their absence was long, and I could not find peace. I was obsessed to learn of the outcome of the expedition that I had hurled across the spaces of the ocean. I could think of nothing else. Early one morning the following year, a captain of one of the ships had returned, and was waiting outside the gates of the palace to talk to me. The captain of the boat said that they sailed for a long while, until they came to what seemed to be a strong current flowing in the open ocean. The other ships sailed on, but as they came to that strong current they were swiftly pulled out over the horizon of the ocean until they disappeared. The captain said that he did not know what became of the ships because the waters were strong and swift and he was afraid and turned back and did not enter the current. This news made me more fixed in my obsession, some said I even bordered on madness. I went with my royal court to the plain at the western edge of Mali where the first fleet had been built and had disembarked. Like the pyramid builders of dynastic Egypt, I began to recognize my whole empire around a single massive project. I assembled a vast army of craftsmen. I scaled up the shipbuilding operation, this time to send a massive armada of 2,000 ships to explore across the ocean. Paired men and women were being chosen for the new expedition, and fears were expressed by my subjects that in my madness I would sacrifice hundreds of my people to the voyage across the ocean. But. I was unwavering. I never looked back. I stayed amongst the shipbuilders and never returned to the royal court at Niani. This time I wanted to lead the expedition myself. So do you remember Psalms 83 verse 4? Yeah, that's what they did. That's why they said that, oh, Africans have no history. Don't worry about it. They were just slaves. And you see, they take our history and they give it to someone else. They give it to another people. You understand? And we know that Mansa Musa it's coming out now, Mansa Musa, the richest man that ever lived. Ah, that's because he's King Solomon. And the guy that created the Mali Empire, Sandhya Keita, he's King David. Okay? They completely distorted history. They completely distorted history to the point where that history has to be revamped. Like, we have to go over everything again. 
because they completely distorted and they can't get away with that because that's a disservice to our ancestors and even white people white people think they know their history no you don't jewish people think they know their history no you don't okay you don't know your history